Every August, the thrill of the off season reaches its peak in Boise. Cotton candy skies illuminate a summer send off with a sweet goodbye. It's a moment to embrace one last spin before you bump into the most anticipated time of the year that always seems to arrive at a supersonic speed. Rising waters signal it's time to take a dip in the blue. And there's only one way to prepare yourself for the roller coaster of emotions of football season. Into the clear, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40, hurls it in, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, 5, touchdown, Aston Chetty. With the Heisman hopeful leading the way, the Spencer Danielson era is here. And the Broncos believe it's not doing a small thing, but they're built different. Billstead gets the snap. Rush closes in. Another sack. This time it's Hassanine. Matson quarterback draw five, and he's into the end zone. Maddox Jeter Madsen. If that's not a winner, I don't know what the heck is. There's a lot of great excitement and buzz, and our players deserve that. But we got to continue to earn it every single day. As the climb begins for one of the most anticipated falls in Boise State football history, the Broncos are trying to hit new heights. Welcome to the Blueprint. The beginning of a season provides a lot of hope. And we have an unbelievable team of men who have done everything we've asked of them this off season and Spencer being the leader of that space. I've been in this industry for 20 plus years and ultimately certain characteristics rise and I didn't have really any intent of hiring someone internally. Hey champ, hey champ, how you feeling? I'm not sure in my career I've seen that level of unity across the board. Stop the search. It's over. We did it. He was worlds ahead of where he should have been in terms of his age and experience. And we all looked at each other and said he could be our coach. With that being said, and our next leader of our Bronco football team, I would like to welcome your head coach, Spencer Danielson. I don't know if I could have asked him to do any more than, than how this offseason went. And they would run through walls for him. And that's powerful for our team and the culture that he's built. How the players follow him. Um, and, you know, our players love SD. The way he comes into the team meeting, the way he shows up, the energy he brings every single day. And our players have, you know, really, you know, got behind him. When he says he loves us, he means it. And it's to know that you're cared for makes you care equally as much, even more for that person because how Coach D cares for us, for us to show our care back is to be successful. The way that he handle things and the way he's on top of everything, I still believe in him. I still will run through a hundred walls now because I know what he can do and know how much he take care of us. I'm just grateful for him. He's a really good coach. Why we rally around him so much is because he puts us in positions to be the best we can be every day. Obviously, since January, we've been working on the 24 campaign, but wanted every player on our team to get a chance to lead in their own way and see how they do that consistently. Because yes, being a really good player helps you have guys watch you, but that does not mean that you're a leader. That does not mean you're doing everything it takes in how you live, how you prep, how you train to be a captain. So I wanted to give our team eight months, essentially, to watch each other and see who is really elevating themselves to step in these leadership roles. Once again, guys, this is voted on by you. We tallied the votes. This is who you guys want to be our captains. And the team meeting prior to fall camp starting is when I announced to our captains, where as we start playing football again, helmets on, as we got three weeks till game week, I wanted to show our guys these are the captains. Team captains, Jonah Dalmas. First one up, good job, get up for Jonah. It was one of those moments where it was kind of just like a deep breath of just like, man, all this hard work. Jonah, congrats, man. Love you. Appreciate you. To be a team captain means everything to me and something that I won't, won't take for granted for sure. Next up, offensively, Ashton Genty. A lot of great players on this team, but I think being a captain. Proud of you, Deuces. Keep pushing. It's more than that. You know, it's serving your team. I definitely don't take it lightly. You know, there's been a lot of great captains before me, and, you know, just to keep that legacy going, you know, it's very important. All right, defensively, we're going to have co-captains defensively. 
the votes were dang near pretty close. And if our team has it that way, we're going to have co-captains this year. So first defensive captain is Alex Tubner. By far my most proud accomplishment on a personal level. I just knew I'd stay genuine in who I am, do things my way, and try to lead by example. And uh, it means a lot to me that my teammates had, the, had enough respect for me to vote me into that role. And second defensive captain is Ahmed Hossein. The biggest accomplishment I ever had. The best thing that ever happened to me. Becoming a captain, I told this to my dad. I was like, Dad, I'm team captain. And he was like, you understand what that means? Like, I, I came as a, I came all the way from Egypt. I came a very long way. Like, I didn't even speak English, Dad. Like, I, I didn't even know football. And to become a team captain in four years, I'm really, really blessed with the opportunity. This is an honor I'll forever carry into my entire life. I am a process-oriented guy. I mean, I do the same thing every morning. I joke with people sometimes, like if you, no matter what time of year, at certain times, you can know exactly what, what I'm doing. Where I come from work, I'm driving down Federal Way, and I love driving in and seeing that cross lit up on Table Rock, because the majority of the time when I drive to work, I'm, I'm praying for our players, and I'm praying for wisdom for myself to lead them and grow them every single day. So it's, it's a quiet time for me driving in, getting my mind right. The coaches I had at APU changed my life and just showed me you know, how much football is a vehicle to change young men's life for, for better and, and make them the best version of themselves. And so I was like, you know what? I want to coach. Like, that's what I want to do. And I talk with the coaches at Azusa Pacific, Victor Santa Cruz, who's the head coach, who's still a mentor of mine. I said, Coach, you know, I really want to get into coaching when I'm done playing. And he was like, let's do it. Built different and something that we've been open about is something that I felt since I've been at Boise State. You know, this is going into year eight for me. And, you know, the first year that I was, we lived in Boise, and me and Rachel moved out here, people would, you know, call us and see, like, what, you know, what, what is it about Boise? And we found ourselves just continually saying, man, it's just different here. It's an amazing place. It's just different from the people to the area. Like, there's so many things that are just different and no different for our football program. We're going to train different. We're going to love on our players different. We're going to hold them to extremely high standards. And we're going to do it with a smile on our face. And we're going to keep pushing forward. And so the word climb is something that I talk to our players a lot about and our staff because life is a journey. Life is a climb. It's not about mountaintop experiences. Adversity is going to strike. Life's going to hit you in the face. If, if it hasn't already, it's coming for everybody. And so when that happens, what is next? What are you climbing to? And so the acronym of CLIMB are our core values. The C is competition, L is love, I is integrity, M is mentality, and B is belief. Those are our core values. That's what we want to work to be every single day, on the field, off the field, in the community. Being someone that understands what love truly means. Love is not rainbows and butterflies and everything's all easy. Love is sacrifice, love is action. If I truly love someone, I will sacrifice anything for them. Love is an action. And it matters to me that um, you know, our players um, have a foundation. And that's why um, you know, I'm open about my faith. And some people might not like that. That's OK. It's who I am. And it does not come from a place where, look at me, I'm so perfect. It is not. It is a constant process. It's a constant walk. A huge thing for me is setting a standard for, for our schedule. Your family has to be a part of it. I want our coaches, kids, and families to be around because they need that time. Their kids need to see their dad coach. I need my girls around me to see me, hey, when, when, when you wake up in the morning and I'm not at home and you see mom, dad's at work. Dad's providing for our family, and he's, he's having an impact. There's a, extremely high expectations at Boise State, and there needs to be. As the head coach at Boise State, that is a weight I carry, and it's a weight that, that I love. Any field we walk on, the blue especially, any team we go play on the road, we go in those games to win, every single one of them. There's no time to waste. I can't come in and, hey, guys, I need a little bit of time to wake up. That is unacceptable. I got to come in ready to go every single day, in season, out of season, and that's on me. Because by the time I get out of my truck, when I go to work, it is on. I love going to work. I love our staff. I love our players. There's nothing I won't do for them. 
It's going to be high energy, it's going to be intense. It's going to be fast and efficient too. Going to make sure our practices are crisp. When that horn hits, we are moving to the next period. You better know where you're going or I'm going to be chasing you there. I want our players coming to work every day with a smile on their face. You can do really hard work and grow and develop to be the best version of yourself and still have fun doing it. And I think that's the key to life. It's going to be high energy, be intense, guys will be flying around. I am very confident the plan we have in place for our players to develop this fall camp is the best in the country. Very confident in it. Everybody's excited, but how can we separate ourselves from the rest? Yeah. It's by yeah. doing the small things right. Urgency in everything you do. What are you willing to do for this team? Yeah. Show me right now. Let's go. Ready? Break down. Break down. Luckily, I'm fortunate enough that Coach Spencer and, and the guys let me come out and, and watch practice. You know, when you leave the game, you know, I've been retired now, you know, two, three years. It's the greatest team sport ever, right? Me and you race. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh. I just pulled the hamstring. When you leave the game and you're not a part of something, I mean, it's hard to find your next purpose. And so uh, to be able to come out here and, and watch these guys and hang out with Spencer and and support, you know, Coach Cutter. One more time, throw the other way. We lost one of our golfing buddies. Throw. Decided to come back and go to work. I just think it speaks to... Max is get, trying to get it back. How he feels about Spencer, what he feels about this, this organization, uh, this program, um, the fans here. Like when Dirk said he'd do it. Same thing, eyes closed. Like everybody's like, hell yeah. I'll bet you we do better. I'll bet you we do better. Across our entire team, there's a ton of position battles that I cannot wait to see going to fall camp. Obviously, quarterback being one of them. Maddox and Malachi are going to compete at extremely high levels. My mind was flustered when I hit the portal and a little bit worried move, you know, moving here. I obviously grew up in, in, in L.A., lived there my whole life, went to college there. So a lot different here, um, and uh, it, it's been really great. You know, I did I coming here did I think it was going to? Absolutely not. I'd be lying if I said it did. But, you know, when I got here, man, I, I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the people. Maddox has been a huge help for me. Six inch steps. Fast, 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 throw. Maddox Maddox has a lot of equity with this team. Humble and hungry, low ego, high output. That's Maddox Maddox. But he's earned the right to go into fall camp getting the blue refs. It's a little bit different situation. I feel like my whole life, that's all I've done, right, is kind of compete for the guy above me. But I also think it's a blessing to be able to, like, be in the position I am and, like, go out there with those guys every day and just compete. Straight up, straighten it up. Good. I enjoy having, like, people rely on me in a way, you know, like, it's a good type of pressure to where I have, like, there's expectations being held for me, and I know, personally, I have higher expectations than that. Everything's going to be graded. Everything's going to be analyzed. It's going to be very black and white. And whatever quarterback gives us the best opportunity to win games will be the start. I think our wide receiver position is extremely deep. Latrell Caples was probably the most consistent in fall camp. But I feel good about our, our receivers as a whole. There's a bunch of guys in there who can make plays. This is the most important part because, you know, um, coach has been preaching a lot to us. We haven't started the season the last three years how we wanted to. It's been three straight L's. So, I mean, this is a pivotal point for us to, you know, start fast. Like we need to be ready to play playoff football week one. There's been points in prior seasons where we kind of had false expectations for ourselves because I don't think we truly earned the right to say certain things about ourselves. Like we look in the past and Coach D showed us how we start started previous seasons and we realized like pulled up quotes of what we said about ourselves and it just what didn't come to fruition, right? So we know now that it's one thing to say something, it's a whole other thing to actually earn the right to be that. Hey now, hey now. Oh yeah. yeah but Lots of hoot! The water dot! Come on, there you go, brother. Hey, let's go. Them drums are rolling. It's getting hot. Come on, brother. Oh. Let's, go. <laughs> let's go. Here comes Mr. Camper, number nine. Day two, let's go, brother. Have a great one. There he is, gotta love it. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Boom, jack -a -lock -a. Let's go, boys. Come on now. Every single time you reset and come into fall camp, you gotta find your rhythm again. You gotta find your mojo, your swag. 
and every year that's a process where you kind of get into that development of like how can we take this a step further now and you know every day you're being tested those are just moments where it's just kind of like all right let's go time honestly it's just the culture piece that we have here and we're fully embracing and practice is an opportunity to get better how much better do you want to get is up to you Man, we're, uh, we're efficient. That is one of the biggest things that Coach C emphasizes, intentionality and efficiency in everything that we do. We want to get in and out, get the work done the way it's supposed to be done. The clock's rolling and we're not going to stop. You either get your rep or you lose your rep. And as players, it makes us realize every rep's an opportunity. Our offense is the most efficient they've ever been. Like on the ball, they just on dot, everything. I think this is the best offense I've ever faced. Defense. We are efficient. We get the call. We line up. We execute. So the competition is really, really high. Really high right now. And I love it. Being efficient is a, is a huge deal to me. You only got so many hours in a day. And I stress to them that I will never make them do anything that has not been thought out, planned out, and is extremely strategic. Everything is researched, everything is thought out. No different post-practice from how long they have to do their recovery, from the ice baths to getting their lunch. Like everything is timed, and so efficiency is paramount, but it takes everybody. My name is Sam Wade. I am the Director of Performance Nutrition here at Boise State Athletics. Oh, you got one open, okay, great. I'm the primary dietitian for the football team. I love my job. You guys crushed it. I have my dream job. I enjoy working with our players. They're the best group of guys. Yay! So post-practice, we always have some type of fluid for the guys to drink. So that way it gets into their system quickly. It gets their muscles getting recovered immediately. Um, and the sooner you can get that in after practice, can we top that one off? The better off you are with a recovery standpoint. I know that sounds very picky, but all calories matter. So we are prepping for end of practice recovery. Super important because they're working out very hard. So they need to get optimal recovery in, in order to perform their best. All right, recovery time. On the menu, we typically have um, chocolate milk or core power, sterilized some type of protein shake. Chocolate milk has a phenomenal ratio of carbs to protein, which is perfect for recovery because you need both carbs and protein to get your muscles ready to go for the next exercise. Cheers. Let's get that cracked open. Nice. Great choices. We love chocolate milk. They love it. They are very excited about it. <laughs> yes, sir. I love chocolate milk. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't really know the full reason behind the actual just chocolate milk, but. How much milk do we have left? I figured we'd go through a lot today. It's a good tasted uh, drink right after practice for sure. Great recovery. I think it's a childhood favorite for most people, and so for them to be able to enjoy that and. <laughs> Um, know that it's helping their bodies. I think they get really excited about it. As you can tell. <laughs> Got milk, need milk. Does your body good. Coach Pete is a huge mentor of mine. Probably a couple years ago, we started to get closer. And then when I got the job, I called him and said, Coach, I want you to mentor me. Talking with players that played for him and just the love and the impact that he had on their life, because that's what I want. Yes, winning games and, and is what we're put here to do and being extremely successful, but seeing the impact that he had on these players just made me so interested in who he was and what he was about. And so he is just a huge resource for me and a guy that I will continually call and pick his brain on to make sure I'm not missing something, because I think the world of him, he's done it at such a high level and he's done it the right way. This place has so much tradition. It's always good to learn from guys that, that were here before and that were that did great things here. You know, we talk about Chris Peterson, one of the best of the best, you know. Kamala, you know, a guy that I played with. And when I was here, he was like my big brother. He taught me the way of what hard work looked like and how to be successful here at Boise State. So it's good to have, you know, guys that always come back from the past, you know, make an influence on these guys. You know, they're constantly trying to learn the way of what it is to be a Bronco. My name is Kamale Correa, former Boise State linebacker, years 2013 to 2015, and uh, now entrepreneur and barbershop owner here at Novelty Salon. Ooh, 
I was in shambles, brother. I was at a very low point in life after after football. And once I felt I was at a good place and I was confident enough to kind of embark on a new journey, I got in a barbering. I think for me, I try to know my role. I had my time, I did my deal, I had my glory, and it's not about me. There's new kids coming up and it's their time and it's their season. Hey, what's up, brother? What's up, man? You doing good? Yes, sir. You look good, man. You had a good camp? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good to see you, brother. Ahmed is Ahmed for a reason, and where he's gotten to is clearly off of his hard work and his dedication towards the game. I think he's gonna do just fine. He's a great kid. If I could just give one thing to put in his arsenal to help him throughout life and anything, like that's victory. So how's camp, bro? It's really good, man. I mean, best football I ever played was this whole camp. And why was this camp better than the other ones? I feel like it was just a lot more detailed than I've ever been. Just a lot more locked in because it's on now. I have so much to prove. What was your mentality going into a practice or going into a game? My mentality, man. It's crazy thinking back. And I say that because it's like, obviously my goal was to play at the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy journey. Mm -hmm. And the first day I stepped on campus, bro, you know Gabe Rosenwald? Yeah. He was like, so what's your plan? You know, like, what degree do you want to yeah. do? It was funny, because I told him straight up, I was like, Gabe, I'm going to the NFL. Mm -hmm. And I guess for me, when you say the word mentality, it's like, I didn't have another option. There was not much going for me mm -hmm. back where I'm from in Hawaii. I didn't have the best upbringing, so I never wanted to look back, man. That was my mentality. Like, I have kind of a similar story, like, nothing was going for me in either either. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's why I moved to the whole state. It's just crazy to think, figuring this whole football thing out. You're trying to speak English, dog. Being used as a role model for the kids back in Egypt too, dog. Oh, yeah. It's like, how cool is that? So I, I got a question for you. What's up? How did you, like, flip the switch? Bro, I grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. How we're raised, man, it's like you always greet people with respect and integrity. Mm -hmm. So for me, I didn't really like you know, the confrontation outside of football. Yeah. Because I knew in football, mm -hmm. I can hit somebody and not get in trouble for it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where was my outlet, right? Yeah. You ever get pulled out of practice for going too hard? I've got in trouble. I was taking out my anger and my frustration mm -hmm. out on the scout team. I'm like, why am I beating up my teammate? Yeah. Because the in this fall camp, he just like kind of like pulled me out of plays. Yeah. Just because I'm like going too hard or like throwing somebody in the ground. He's like, I'm not out. Okay, I got it. Yep. Did you get coached by Chris Peterson? I did. How was how was he like? Tremendous. Really. One of a kind, bro. He gave me I think one of the best compliments he I, did? I ever gotten. He was like, there's a guy that's all pro. And he looks at me and he was like, that could be you. And I go, oh my God. It's a blessing, bro. Absolutely. He sees like my work ethic and how hard I'm just on myself to just get better and get 1% better. Focus on all of the little things that you don't think matter, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, look over every unturned rock in your life, dude. Like how you're treating people how you're approaching your, your training. Because all those little things is in pure preparation for the next level. Yeah. Because at 23, you know, you think you got it all figured out and you think you know everything that's going on. You don't know nothing, bro. Mm -hmm. Because even at 30 right now, I'm still learning so much, dude, that I think I, I had it figured out. Man, I didn't have nothing figured out, bro. It was a rude awakening for me, man. Like how? When I got drafted, I went to the Baltimore Ravens. I got put in front of Hall of Famers. I had Elvis Doomerville, dude, Terrell Suggs, CJ Mosley, man, coming from BSU and mm -hmm. coming from being the guy, right, the dude. It was just a very humbling experience, you know, to take the back seat. Bro, the best way to earn a veteran's respect in the NFL, dude, mm -hmm. shut your mouth, bro. Shut your mouth.
and go to work. Go mm -hmm. to work, bro. Show them why, why you got drafted. I don't know, I hope that helps, bro. I'm just excited to watch y'all, man. How you feel, man? Feel great, you got me right. Huh, you feel good? Just to gain a customer for life. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Being around these guys, whether it's six in the morning or whatever, during the off season, like I've seen him put in the work. So when it happens on game day, it's not a surprise. That's the beauty of what I get to do Yeah, it's a freaks list, and every year Bruce Feldman comes out with it, the top 100 freaks in the country. Yeah. Let's see. Blessed to have one of our players on it, Ashton Genty, who is one of the biggest freaks I've ever seen in terms of coaching. I've coached now for 24 years. And he made the list 54. I would argue that he's much higher than that, but that's, that's where they placed him on the list. Yeah, there it is. Ashton's so humble. Like, I just said, hey, man, did you see you on the freaks list? He's like, yeah, that's cool. You know, like, like. I would say it's not surprising because of what I see him do all off season, but I still like when it happens, you're like, Phew. that was cool. His strength to body weight ratio, again, I've coached 24 years at a lot of places. I like guess the best I've ever seen. Pound for pound, he is the strongest football player I've ever coached. Ashton's about 215 pounds. He can squat 605 easily. Maybe 650 and 700 pounds if I let him put that on his back. So he's got that strength, but on top of that, he's got great, tremendous speed. His max velocity, he's run over 22 miles per hour in games before with full pads on. But his ability to put a foot in the ground, change direction, redirect, accelerate, decelerate. If somebody tries to take his knees out, jump over them. Usually somebody has one or two or three of those qualities, but like I don't see a, I don't see a weak spot in his game. NFL scouts come in here almost every single day, and I meet with those guys in this office. And as easy as it is for me to talk about his physical attributes and what kind of freak he is in the weight room, it's even easier to talk about the type of man he is. Like, as good of, as good of an athlete and as strong as he is, he's even a better person. You know, humble, hardworking. He's a 10 out of 10 in terms of the type of person he is as well. So, like, there's the freaks list, and if there was, like, great human beings in college football, he'd be on that list as well. Every drill. Consistently dominate. How you feeling today? You good? Right? I ain't gonna let you have a bad day anyway. Yeah. I try to get those guys at all times to have a chip on their shoulder. Ain't nothing wrong with that, you know. I wanna be the best in the film room, I wanna be the best in the weight room, and then obviously when we get out on the field, we wanna dominate. Playing against us, we wanna be the best nationally. I get to work with Jambres Dubar today. <laughs> Get loose, get loose, get loose. That's what you want to do every year within your room. You want to make sure you create good competition. And so it all starts with Ash. He comes in, he knows he's the leader of this team and the leader of our room. Speed cut, speed cut. Drop your hips, finish under the shoot. We good? All right, ball on the right. And he kind of sets the temperature, you know, of kind of what, how we're going to play every day. Set, work. And so he knows it, it kind of runs through him. He has to come in locked in and ready to go every day. And that's that's what he's done this off season is really proven to be a, be a leader. Hit. Speed, 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 hit it. It's just the little things each and every single day. It's realizing what things do you do well, and then what things maybe can you take another step in. And you know, for me, football IQ, uh, taking care of the body, the nutrition, and I think all those things uh, has propelled me uh, this uh, fall camp. It's something we talk about every day. It's relentless effort, and I think everybody's starting to see that in how he practices. He probably is putting more work in than like anyone on the team. Like, the amount of times in summer, I saw him bringing the running backs out to the field and working after practice. Us being able to see that is enough for us. Like, he's really just, like, the definition of a blue-collar athlete. He doesn't care about himself. He wants the team to succeed. He knows scouts are here to see him, and that, that, <laughs> that's, that's awesome, but it's still, you got to come out and you got to operate a certain way every day. It's definitely dope, um, you know. I'm just thankful that I have a great team, a great group of coaches, and you know that I've been able to be put in this position. It's a it's a blessing, you know. T you know when you make plays and you do great things on the field, you know that's what comes with it. But at the same time, I'm just focused on you know getting better and you know spending time with my brothers and you know getting ready for the season. So as a coach, you, you want guys that you can get to that next level, and so he can carry the ball with the best of them. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He understands protections and whatever role you know at the next level is asked of him. I don't hope. I know he'll be able to to accomplish whatever he wants to. The only thing I pray for Ash for is health. You know, that's all. That's all I pray for him.
hands it off to Jetty up the middle. Breaks clear. Nobody's going to catch him. Ashton Jetty again. There are a lot of great running backs in college football right now. All these other guys are at Power 5 schools, but I think at the end of the day, I'll prove that I'm the best. One of one, top one, I'd say. Genty again, sheds tacklers. Most of these guys, they are good at one thing. Hurdles a man. They're either fast or they're strong. He's fast and strong and athletic and shifty. He's definitely the hardest person that I think I had to go up against. Hand off Genty right side. Genty will get to the five. Genty to the four. Keeps his balance. Did he score? He stretched the ball out. I like his game a lot. He's a really, really great back. I watched his film a couple times. I take from him. He has really great contact balance. Like, really great contact balance. It's honestly surreal. Yeah. Great. That's probably one word I can say about him if I was to put it into one word. He's phenomenal. Green quick hand off to Gent. He went right, cut back to the left. He could be running full speed, about to make a move and get hit in the middle of his move. And his shoulders are still parallel. They're still pointing north to south, and he's still getting downhill. High steps into the end zone, and the Broncos take the lead. For being uh, back of his size, too, uh, he has some great feet on him as well. One of the quickest persons I've ever seen touch the rock. He has a great feel of playing that running back position. Into the clear, to the 40, to the 50, to the 40, hurdles a man, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, 5, touchdown, Aston Chetty. I've got the highest amount of respect for a player as I could have for him. The ball in his hands out in open space, his vision, ability to break tackles, make people miss. I think he's one of the elite backs in college football. Go to the run, Genty untouched to midfield. Tacklers trying to knock him down, they can't. He spins, and another huge run for Genty. We had a problem defending him and tackling him last year. It's hard to stop a player with that mentality who you know is going to bring it every game. He's one of the best backs in college football for sure. Hand off Genty, left side, untouched into the end zone. I don't do this just to be any other player. I do feel I'm the best. So scrimmage number one, our guys did a really good job prepping for this. And as coaches, you have this scrimmage, you have next week's scrimmage, and then you've got two weeks till we play Georgia Southern. So this scrimmage, this was practice number nine, is just a really good parameter of where we're at. And that was my message to our team earlier today. We are exactly who we put on film today. So there's no hiding from it. The good, the bad, and that's the beautiful thing about football is you can't run from that. It's black and white. There's some guys today that did a really good job. There's some guys that have a lot of growth that still needs to happen prior to kickoff. So I'm proud of how they competed. I'm proud of how our guys showed up today. They've had a really good fall camp so far, and it's all about how we grow from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. And so as coaches, we got to look at ourselves. Our players got to look in the mirror and say, how do I grow from now to Monday's practice? You've got to put yourself in those stressful situations so you get to that breaking point to realize, hey, how am I going to respond to this? Ideally, you want everybody to respond in a positive way, but if they don't, how are you going to be able to change that? And so putting all of us in that, in that breaking point, in that stress point where, hey, things are hot, things are tired, and then also getting a feel of what it's going to be in a human environment. This is our first of a few Inferno days. As we're prepping for some of those warmer games. Uh, He's trying to replicate as best we can, Georgia. <laughs> we try to get our set point right around 100 degrees and we try to pump as much uh, water into the air as we can. So for the past two days, we've had these hoses set up on you know, 10, 12 foot ladders and we've just been rotating them throughout the facility to get the humidity level up in here to try and replicate as best we can the conditions we're gonna see out on the road this year. <laughs> Sitting about 94, 96. We can get about 25 to 30 degrees different from what's outside. It's going to be a little bit cooler here at the start of practice. Once we get these hoses off, I bet you we're going to end up around 96, 98, 99 degrees in here with humidity. Come on! Let's oh, go! Yeah. I would say um, it really challenges us mentally, you know, more than anything. Inferno is like going through hell and back. It's supposed to be that way and it's supposed to be hard. Coach D and the staff did a good job of making it even more extreme than we'll see playing down in Georgia. 
the moment you're in there from the moment you leave you're sweating by the end of practice your shoes got puddles in them the, the ground's wet it, it's a pretty intense practice guys get sweaty 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 we're in Boise it gets hot out here but nothing like what we'll see when we go to Georgia so I think just the mental aspect of can we do our job when you know we're tired and it's humid in there is high, you know, you gotta still be able to think and execute. Humidity adds a whole nother factor to it. Our nutrition staff, they're super dialed, fluids with salts, whatever it may be, to make sure that we have what we need, electrolytes to stay on the field. You gotta have fun with it. Um, if you think about it, it's gonna be bad for you, but if you fly around and just play hard like it's a regular, like another regular day, then it's another regular day for you out there in the office. At the end of the day, it's on us to practice hard and to get in shape and be able to handle a heavy workload. Just as linebackers specifically, it's kind of just in our job description to set the tone. We take pride in it, he takes a ton of pride in it, you know. We knew we had to take a step in leadership knowing that we were stepping into that role and uh, we didn't take it lightly. Together, they're a really nice tandem. Drew is going to be more of a, a true flash guy, like he's going to make those big plays and he has a great nose for the football. Marco, he's always going to be in the right spot, always going to have the front set. He's going to be a great tackler. He's going to make the plays that we need them to make. We have a switch that we turn as like ball players and, and how competitive we get and whether it's the EA Sports game or a game on the blue, like ooh, we turned all the way up. I'm Doc Haskell, I'm the head coach of Boise State Esports. Four-time national, 12-time Mountain West champion. Boise State's pretty good at this too. With fall semesters comes football, and with football comes the hottest new game everyone's talking about in the esports scene, College Football 25. And who better to showcase this new game for us than the actual Boise State football team? We knew that they would love it here. We've been trying to find that opportunity. So when they said, can we do it? I'm your host, Jacob Palmer. I am joined by Joey Jenkins. It's great to have you with us. Our staff pulled around it and said, yeah, let's, let's set this up. As you can tell by my physique, I can never play actual football, but I've spent plenty of time uh, in the few weeks that the game has been out for College Football 25. So we got unity teams. We call it Bronco Olympics throughout fall camp. And it's so focused on just the connection of our team. Right from the get-go, we have Boise State playing against Boise State with the Boise State players playing as themselves. The last Bronco Olympic event for fall camp is an EA Sports championship. We told these guys about this competition coming and they were fired up. We got some guys that have told me that they probably put too much time on the video game when it, when it popped out. Jonah Dalmas now joins us. This has got to be fun. Very competitive as you can tell. Yeah. You're all just screaming <laughs> yeah. in the background. These guys are all about it so it's a good time. Intensity is where you are in the moment. This group is naturally competitive. Let's talk about some of the best players you think on the team. And we're going against Latrell's team. He's okay. the captain of that team. And I would probably say if Oh, look at that touchdown by Prince. It's yeah. definitely going to be Latrell Capels by far. So we're in the championship game. Goonies versus Che. Big one for Chafe. They go empty set back again. Last time they oh. threw it, it was oh. a pick. Oh, going deep, wide right open, Bolt. Oh, it's Dan oh. Bolt. That is the play. The local hero. I haven't played a video game since playing Mario Kart N64 probably 10, 15 years ago. First one's a warm up. I'll still win, but we'll just figure it out. We found out early from Coach D that uh, that he was a more of a classically trained gamer. It doesn't matter. Just just put the ball down, Marco. Put the ball down. Put the ball down. We didn't have Mario Kart up, so we had to put it together for him and found a, a couple of the players that really wanted to be a part of it. Brax, whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Super glider. I have no idea how to play the game. No idea. Ooh. Yep, here we go. I don't want any excuses, Marco. Anyone you guys like, I'm going to keep on sliding through here. It's A. Oh, it's going back. Oh, wait, it's, wait, it's not A. A is go. A is go. B, B is go. Okay, I got it. B is go. Cap, see ya. How do you launch him? There you go. Found it. Woo! Woo! We're good. We're good. Is Braxton first? Ah! Oh, dang it. Here we go. Ah! Oh! Is that you, Brax? Yep. Oh, good Here's another one, too. 
You're welcome. Boom. That's See fine. ya. What's the whole drift situation Don't here? Worry about it. Bowser, really? Yeah. Is that you, Ahmed? Yeah. I'll remember that tomorrow. <laughs> oh no, no. Come on. Come on. Dude. Mm, I'm a freak. Oh yeah, I know now how to drift. This one is good. Which is one? Is this one? This one. Okay, got it. Why are you? Why are you? Thanks, Marco. Bro. I don't get it. Thanks, Marco. I seriously don't get it. Thanks, Marco. Oh, you gave me the drift secret. Here we go, first place. Looking good. Who's this little slappy in front of me here? You Keep guys picked coming. the wrong game, Drift bro. time. You guys picked the wrong Drift game to time. play. Drift time. Ah! Come on, get there, get there. Go! Go, go, go! Go, go! Go! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Fourth? Gosh, darn it! Guys, I struggled. I honestly, I came in probably overconfident. I just want to see the award ceremony. <laughs> yeah, let's watch it together. <laughs> just trying to soak it all in, dude. Basket. I, I can go to sleep tonight. A champion. Baby Peach. It's the Mike Tyson quote. Everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. So much about football is responding to adversity. And the teams that respond to adversity better than others are the teams that win championships. I have to be very strategic on creating change-ups for them so that they respond when things are not ready for them, where something goes off script. And so planning Table Rock, instead of doing it on Sunday, which is what we've done here for years, I wanted to throw it on them at the end of the scrimmage because I knew it was something they could accomplish. I knew it was something they could do. They had to go from thinking, oh, the rest of my day is recover, prep, get my food, and go home. Now it's, oh, whoa. The stakes just changed. Or I'm getting my hiking boots on, and I'm hiking up a mountain. And so just brought the team up at the end of the scrimmage, coaches included, and said, hey, we got to respond. I honestly did not even know anything about table ride. My guys look back at me like, I'm like, I don't even know. None of the coaches knew. Nobody knew. So it was like, you know, we automatically had to flip a switch and, you know, climb Table Rock. Doing it after the scrimmage, it really, like, opened a lot of dudes' eyes. Like, we can do hard stuff, like, if we just put our mind to it. When Coach D says something, you know, the, guy, the guys are all in. You know, we're going to have challenges, we're going to have adversity, but we were able to go up there to Table Rock and crush it. I think that was so cool because throughout the year, we go and face some adversity, we go face some hard times, and we go face some unknown. Uh, how do you respond when you don't know what's going to happen? We played a, a 90, 100 play scrimmage, and then we go and hike Table Rock at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 110 degrees, and the best thing was I didn't hear one guy complain. That made me as a former Bronco like, hell yeah. It just feels good, you know, knowing that you can do like hard stuff and knowing that you got everybody with you. It shows that everybody's together, everybody's committed to one common goal. Those 115 young men have earned the right to finish fall camp together, but I'm proud of where we're at right now, and they're continuing to earn the right to go win game one every single day. So we can't wait to play in front of Bronco Nation in two weeks, and I promise you we'll be ready. Prater in the ball game. KTIK, the ticket, Idaho Sports Talk. We're going to take your calls. We want to talk some Boise State football with you. Prater, fall camp's biggest question was answered a day after the Broncos celebrated the end of fall camp by hiking Table Rock when Spencer Danielson on Sunday announced that Maddox Madsen would be the starting quarterback for the season opener. Maddox Madsen won the job, and I'm really sick and tired of quarterback Palooza at Boise State. Ten different Boise State quarterbacks have taken snaps over the last five seasons. That's not good. Think about the last two seasons. Two seasons ago, four games in, they and fired their offensive coordinator. And the quarterback said, I'm in the portal, and I'm using this as a red shirt. As much as I want to see Malachi Nelson play real live football and what he can do, and if he can really be the difference maker that the five-star hype comes with, that would come at the expense of more quarterback palooza. So I'm really torn here. I mean, this town knows good quarterback play. This town has seen good quarterback play. And if Maddox Madsen doesn't bring it, this town's going to notice it. Hey, Dean, welcome to Idaho Sports Talk. What do you know? What do you say? I feel like I'm one of the few big-time match and cheerleaders out there. I've been excited about him ever since we saw him come in last year, and I think he was hands down the better quarterback last year. You don't get a lot of, oh, I'm so happy Mad Dog won the job. No, I was don't. waiting for him to win the whole time since I first saw him play. There's two things that have been bothering me. The personal attacks on Maddox Madsen's height. 
and, and having covered this program for 31 years and it's been just nonstop blue collar conversation. And then in one afternoon, because a recruiter gave a high school kid five stars three years ago, we're going to just throw that blue collar history out the door at Boise State. Give me the Maddox Madsen every time. That little session, Prater, told me that Bronco Nation, they've calmed down a little bit. Agreed. They love their team. And Agreed. they're saying, okay, maybe we should trust the coaches on this. Or if anything, let's just support the heck out of Maddox Jeter Madsen. If that's not a winner, I don't know what the heck is. I get to go out with my teammates game one, and that's kind of what I work for. Boise State football is the biggest thing in Idaho, so. There's obviously responsibility, but I think the best way to put it is I got a bunch of guys around me that are going to go make plays. We've got eight wide receivers that are ballers, five running backs that could play anywhere around the country right now, and our old line is as dominant as they come. I mean. I have my own confidence internally. I know the player I am. And like I said, when there's so many guys around me, how could I not be confident? Hello, everybody. How are we doing today? Man, one of those Mondays, huh? OK. Guys, it's game week finally. Let's go. I'm shocked you guys aren't standing up doing some chants right now. It's game week. But guys, I appreciate you guys as always being here. You know, we haven't won game one here in a while. And especially on the road, we haven't won in a while. And so that is the message of the team. And that is what we've been working for this entire offseason. Everything we do is earn the right to win game one. We have to do that. That is an action that you have to do from how you're in the training room to how you walk through, to how we install, to how we go through practice, to how we handle this travel. But so much for me is, are we ready and are we playing fast? Those are the two things that I hit our staff on is, I want to make sure game one, when we watch our team, we know our team is ready and they are playing fast. There's been a lot of hype in the offseason about our team. There's a lot of guys that deserve that. Now we got to go put on film. And with hype, it only puts a bigger target on your back. And at Boise State, you embrace that. But now it's our job as coaches and players to go earn the right to go win game one. What I can promise Bronco Nation is everything that you would have wanted from a team off the field and in the off season, these guys have done. They said this was one of the hardest camps they've been through. But it meant that much more to them because they knew how much he cared. Things have changed. You know, Fiesta Bowl was probably the ceiling in the past, and we know what's at stake. And, and the fact is, is that having a seat at that CFP table provides us hope, and hope is powerful. I feel like we have a schedule that aligns with Epic, and Spencer's a uniter. When you have people like that, it's amazing what you can accomplish. And I do believe Spencer's built different.